This video is going to be about the competition or the stall event that happened in Gainesville, Texas, uh, October 28 and 29, 2022. The Lone Star Stall Competition, where me and Alyssa decided it would be fun to participate, but we didn't have an airplane to participate in. Lo and behold, Lewis and Darren Towers, this offered us their airplane. They said, you guys want to fly our airplane in the competition? Our airplane's ready to be flown. We don't have enough experience to fly a stall competition, but Jan does. So why don't we all get together and do this as a team? And we offered, we said, well, that's, that's a great offer. Uh, let's pack up some things and come up there and we'll all do this together. Viking went together with Duke propellers in France to make this really, really large stall propeller. It's, it's lightweight and it's skinny, but it has a 95 inch diameter. In fact, there's even talk about over 100 inches in diameter. But the one we brought was a 95 inch uh, length and we wanted to fit this in order to take advantage of such a relatively small engine in this kind of a competition. So with 130 horsepower, we wanted to get off the ground in between uh, 50 and 70 feet. And we managed to do consistently uh, 67 or so feet on during the competition. Now, in order to mount this kind of a propeller, you need ground clearance. So initially, we had brought a 12-inch extension for the nose wheel. And the airplane kind of looked a little bit dumb with the nose way up in the air. Uh, we also realized after we had it all mounted with a propeller that we didn't need such a, a, a excessively long nose extension. Uh, and there's a story about that. We had it all perfectly made here uh, at home in Florida and we brought it with us. But then needing to shorten it to about half that length, we on a Sunday were lucky enough to find a gentleman working on a steel hanger and we said, is there any way you can kind of help us shorten this? And unbelievable. He dropped everything he was doing. He had built fences before, so he had this technique with a little rope that he put around the strut, made a perfect cut that was indicating where to cut it. Took out some inches, put a socket in the middle to align the two pieces back up and stick welded the thing back together. It was an amazing talent of this individual to do this in such a short time. And you can see the little weld line on the new extension. Now, all of the first uh, videos you're gonna see here is when we're practicing um, before we head over to Gainesville. And you'll see that we are using the large extension. So the airplane will sit with the nose quite a bit up in the air. Later on, after the change, the airplane kind of looks almost normal with the shorter extension. And we kind of liked it. It opens up the opportunity for a lot of Zenit airplanes to use a bigger propeller, which we've seen makes a big difference for stall. Now look at our test landing, how we bounce. We don't have the advantage of uh, shock absorbing landing gear and we don't have the advantage of a lot of testing on this setup. However, we are doing one day's worth of testing. We do want to be responsible and make sure that we have something that we can bring to a competition that has been tested. However, as I'm going to tell you later, there was one thing that kind of got us a little bit. Competition day. The nose wheel you saw in these landings during testing was the long one, and we now have the shorter one, and we're ready to fly over from Decatur, Texas, to Gainesville, Texas. So me and Darren jump in the plane, and we fly together, so Darren can feel what it feels like to fly a competition-equipped stall airplane that can jump off the ground in a third of the distance that he's used to. Here we are in the hangar with Steve Henry talking and sharing ideas, mostly absorbing from him 
from the master of stall. Alyssa was with us all the time and made sure that we were all equipped with what we needed and organizing. Here we have Darren uh, <clears throat> with a crazy idea of cutting slats in the tires. He said, well, these tires are, are not gonna be on this plane very long. I got my condition inspection coming up. So Hank and Darren are using a clamp and a router and making braking grooves in the tires. Everybody's hanging out, sharing stories. Here we are back to the Airbnb and it was such a wonderful thing to have everybody together that we know, that came, like all the Texas crowd. Here's even 48 state Dave Telema came and hung out with us and wanted to cheer us on. A little bit cold on the morning of the competition. Uh, <clears throat> Bill Fay and Alyssa. Mary Hoyt and Alyssa. Uh, Alyssa has made, along with myself, a lot of friends in the community of short takeoff and landing and engine related things and Zenith related. Bill, Pat, and Mary hanging out here. Here I am, Jan, with uh, Steve Ropperly. Steve's wonderful addition to the team. He has a Zenit airplane as well. And here's the airplane ready for competition. And the whole crowd together in anticipation for the big day. So, you know, so this was your first time flying your own airplane. As a stall plane. As a stall a with some odds stall. and stuff, like minor stuff. Mm How -hmm. was about it? Oh, it was fun. I mean, we're off the ground and no, and nothing. What, 20, 30 feet with two people in it? Woo 20 gallons of gas. And Yeah, 20 gallons of gas. You know, half full tanks, plenty of gas to get the gates on back twice. And uh, yeah, and then Jan landed into the wind. Uh, and again, I'm not used to flying this slow. I typically are coming across the threshold at 70 and slowing down. Jan was at 50 and uh, we felt just fine and landed it. I saw 39 when we landed, so that's not bad with two people and fuel. And we got some of the world class competition here in Gainesville. Yep, we got Steve Henry parked right next to me in the hangar right now. So. <laughs> yeah, it's different. <laughs> so. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. That's pretty cool in itself, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. It, it's like, hangar. yeah, it's like, okay, we're in, the, we're in a different group now. <laughs> Hey, Darren. Hey, how's it going? Tell us where you are, what you're doing, and why you're here. I'm up here at Gainesville for the National Stall final event of the season. Uh, I'm up here and letting Jan fly my plane. And we changed the plane around a little bit just for the competition. We got a big gigantic prop on it. We got a little bit more landing gear, and we got some Vortex generators on it. We're gonna go out and do a massive takeoff. And then I'm watching the Chinook take off at two feet. <laughs> All right, let's see what happens. All right. So it's the start of the competition. Actually, it's training or practice session in the morning. So we only got one practice session because of the weather the day before. So whatever we got to do, we got to do right now. During practice, the wind goes straight down the runway, no crosswind, and the takeoffs are actually really, really good, and we're happy about them. Here they are.
Okay, so we can make decent takeoffs that are competitive in our class. How about landings? Well, here's where things started to go wrong. Doug is the organizer of this uh, stole competition, and he has some good advice during the briefing about do not make any modification last minute and don't try anything new that you haven't tested at home. Now, I'm responsible for flying this airplane, and I have to say that the modifications that I decided to do last minute should not have been done because it, it made it so that we, we basically lost our, uh, our group. And the reason was, it wasn't that I had not flown this airplane with doors off before, which is what I decided. I said, well, how do we get rid of this a little bit more weight to be competitive? And I said, well, the doors are like eight pounds a piece. Let's get rid of them. I've flown a Zenith 750 stall many times without doors. They don't need the doors. Well, there was a catch. Basically, once you get into competition and you slow down and you slow down and you slow down and you get behind the power curve and you have the propeller holding the airplane up and there's lots of prop wash pushing the tail down, everything is fine, except and it was during the morning runs. It wasn't great landings, but I didn't detect a major issue until later in the day. Well, let's take a look. And here you can see it with the uh, 60 degree crosswind and the doors off. The air is tripping off the side of the doors and canceling all the lift on the tail and I am trying to slow down. I'm trying to slow down, but the tail stalls, the nose wants to come over. I am forced to add power to unstall the tail and to continue flying. And I'm going around, attempt one, it happens. I'm on downwind for attempt number two and I'm thinking, what is going on? Why am I not able to get behind the power curve and hold the nose up with power? And why is the tail stalling? So my second attempt, I'm coming in a little bit faster, and the third attempt, a little bit faster yet, just to stay safe. And every single time, the nose is dropping, and I'm not sure why it's happening. And it happened because the crosswind component and trying to set up for an ultra-short landing, raising the nose, no air over the tail, the nose would drop, the, no the tail would unstall. I tried again down the uh, approach to the runway and every time I tried it would just get worse so no good landings good takeoffs um, here's when we got back home and let's take a look and see what happened when we put the doors back on again you know anything? okay now. okay for the best Zenith finish <laughs> in the Lone Star Stole competition well, thank you. <laughs> you are number one Zenith. That's it. All right, all right. What did so, I get? Wow. <laughs> a couple of bottles of your favorite choice. Okay. Uh, and then a couple of bottles of your favorite choice. Okay, Camus. Yeah. And? And? It's also Camus, but it's Camus. Camus, Camus too. Yeah. This is a cheap one. <laughs> <laughs> cheap it, cheap it. Yeah, I know. And this, cheap it. And this one's ridiculously expensive. Is that that special paper? Camus glass. With all of their different brands on there. Oh, all right. there you go. All right, that's perfect. Sure. I love Camus. <laughs> right. Congratulations! That was thank you to Steve, honey. Excuse me? That was thank you to Steve. Yeah, it was I, either I know. Gonna be, it was celebration either way. That's right. Probably had him in Couldn't his, lose. Probably had him in his man purse. <laughs> All right, so you can see these kind of events are about a lot of fun and friendship and hanging out and camaraderie, waiting for the weather, study the weather, balancing the plane, balancing the fuel load, getting the plane ready, do some practice and all that. But when it all comes down to it, it's the ex total experience that counts. 
now you can see we're back in Decatur after the competition. I needed to show to myself and maybe maybe to my, my closest friends and now you guys um, that my feeling for two for a day there that I don't know how to fly anymore was really not warranted. Doors are back on, but everything else is, is exactly the same. And uh, we have a crosswind and a slight headwind and I'm making 60 to 70 foot landings, uh, uh, takeoffs and 100 foot uh, landing so but there's always a next time uh, let's study some of these and see what's going on so here's a very controlled approach and a reasonably fast stop no max effort here but look we're halfway down that stripe and bang we're in the air so we're having excellent takeoffs we're having uh having fun we're relaxed the airplane does what it's supposed to do uh, i feel like i'm in 100 percent control over the airplane here's a beautiful thing about a zenith type of airplane see how i'm uh, dropping it in which is a stall plane that's how they were originally designed allowed them to drop in without building speed and now we're in full control, we're slowing, we're slowing, the nose is up in the air, we're a few feet off the ground. A little balloon there, because it's not my plane, I don't fly this regularly, but all in all, very controlled, uh, nose high, add a little bit of power, not maximum effort, but still, anyone can do this with a little bit of practice. You can land in a third of your normal landing distance and take off in a third of your normal takeoff distance <clears throat> by having uh, just a tiny you know a few small changes to the airplane this one has a, a Viking 130 horsepower geared engine that gives you that extra torque it has a large propeller has a little bit of a nose wheel extension as you can see not nearly what we started with and other than that uh, some vortex generators here and there and um, you can take the numbers from the book or from the manual and, uh, and you can do a third of that with practice and here you can see another control the no tendency for the nose to drop we still are going to have the bounce because we have a spring landing gear so the airplane was not set up from the factory for competition uh, or from zenith it was set up to be an economical uh, stall type of airplane. It doesn't have uh, $5,000 landing gear shocks or anything like that. But it does have ease of build, all around versatility, fantastic performance, and uh, incredibly easy to fly once you play around with it like this. There again, nice slow approach, no tendency for the nose to drop. I think on this one I'm having a little bit of fun crossing back with my friends and then uh, parking the plane and calling it a day. It's a wonderful feeling to get in the plane and just play around with it and feel that it's all around balance. Here we're taking the plane and we're reverting it back to Darren Towers original shorter propeller uh, remove the nose gear extension and we're ready for dreaming about the next stall competition. <laughs>